Hi, welcome to Health Talk with Dr. Akram. I am Akram. In this program, we'll be talking about all kinds of different health issues with different experts in the field. But today, I will be talking about drugs to treat COVID-19. So sit back, relax and enjoy your time with us. Did you ever want to study abroad? But don't know where to start? Then look no further, because IES got you covered with dozens of universities and courses ready for your choosing. You too can earn a world-class degree for an affordable price. In your time, indulge yourself in the rich and magnificent cultures of Bulgaria and Romania without any worries because IES will help you every step of the way from visa application to legalization of documents and more. For further information and inquiries, contact us now. International Admission Services Making dreams come true since 2012. We all know that US President Donald Trump had contracted coronavirus and been treated. The White House doctor said the president was given a dose of antibody drug being developed by Regeneron on Friday before he was taken to a military hospital where he has started Remdesivir therapy. Let's look at what Remdesivir and what Regeneron's drug do and how effective they have been in trials. Remdesivir, a drug that once offered hope in the treatment of Ebola, Remdesivir is an antiviral medicine that has been given emergency use authorization in the US to treat patients in hospital with severe COVID-19 but is not approved for general use yet. What is the experimental Regeneron treatment? Drug maker Regeneron provided a dose of its experimental antibody treatment to the president on Friday before the decision to take him to Walter Reed may, uh, was made. Still in large scale clinical trials, the new antiviral antibody cocktail works by binding to a protein on the surface of the virus. This is meant to stop the virus from attaching to cells and replicating while allowing the immune system to attack the virus. Generally virus, when it enters the body, it cannot replicate itself, it cannot multiply itself and simply. It has to go into the host system. So it, once it goes into the host system, it uses the host uh, DNA and other, uh, other informative materials to replicate itself and that's how it multiplies. Anyway. Professor Hobie said a single dose of the treatment provided prolonged protection for a month to six weeks. Dr. Jeremy Faust, an emergency doctor from Boston, USA, said he would, not, he would never give it to his patients because he could not say what the benefit is or the risks. Every cell in your body is a tiny factory, constantly making proteins. Your genetic code, or DNA, directs every activity. Protein-making machinery in the cell reads the cell's own DNA and makes sure the cell proteins go where they're needed. Viruses have their own genetic code, but they don't have the machinery to copy their DNA. So viruses need your cell's machinery to reproduce themselves. A virus starts this process by using the keys on its surface to gain entry. Like a Trojan horse, it enters the cell. The virus releases its own DNA into the unsuspecting cell and hijacks the protein-making machinery. Now, this vital cell function becomes an assembly line for new virus particles. No longer in service to your body, the cell now serves the virus, manufacturing thousands of new virus particles, which are released to enslave more cells, thousands and thousands more. Let's look at coronavirus drugs and treatments. 
it's all about what's available in the market how much we know about them and how useful are they in killing this super virus the covid 19 pandemic is one of the greatest challenges modern medicine has ever faced doctors and scientists are scrambling to find treatments and drugs that can save the lives of infected people and perhaps even prevent them from getting sick in the first place. But there is no cure yet for COVID-19 and even the most promising treatments to date only help certain group of patients and await validation from further trials. The countries around the globe has not fully licensed any treatment specifically for the coronavirus, although some have granted emergency use authorization to some treatments. The effectiveness against COVID-19 has yet to be demonstrated in large-scale randomized clinical trials. When the drugs are produced generally, um, it's, been, it's been trialed on cells uh, uh, which is extracted from uh, human or, or animals then the next step they go and try them on animal that's called animal study then third they grew uh, they try them on uh, volunteers or people who are paid uh, uh, for this this job and we try the drugs on them and once it's safe at that point then they go for the randomized clinical trials where it comes to general patients but in a controlled trial so this uh, some patients will have this drug and some person will have placebo is something um, not exactly uh, this medicine so they will give some uh, a, a dummy tablet and they will see the results when this proves that this particular drug has a higher effect and it works better and, and that's the time they prove for general public so that's what we call randomized trials Let's look at the first drug, Remdesivir, made by Gillette Science, was the first drug to get emergency authorization from the US Drug Authority's FDA for use in COVID-19. It interferes with the creation of new viruses by inserting itself into new viral genes. Remdesivir was originally tested as an antiviral against Ebola and Hepatitis C, only to deliver lackluster results. But a randomized controlled trial published in May concluded that drug reduced the recovery time of people hospitalized with COVID-19 from 15 to 11 days. Not big difference in general terms. The trial did not show any effect on mortality, though retrospective studies data released in July hints that the drug might reduce death rates among those who are very ill. On October 3, Dr. Streeting, President Trump said he is receiving five days course of remdesivir intravenously. This drug cost £1,900 or 2340 US dollars for five days. I doubt this drug is, is effective for everyone in the world. The price is huge. Favipiravir, originally designed to beat back influenza, Favipiravir blocks a virus ability to copy its genetic material. A small study in March indicated the drug might help purge the coronavirus from the airway. Larger randomized trials are now underway. MK4482 MK4482 is another antiviral originally designed to fight the flu. Ridgeback, Biotherapeutics and Merck are collaborating to develop it as a treatment for COVID-19. The drug was previously known EIDD2801. The drugs, when they are formulated, they've been given these code names until they're proven safe so they could give uh, uh, medical or pharmaceutical names and we could carry on. So uh, even though they give pharmaceutical, some, some of them are very difficult to pronounce as well, but let's go. Produced, um, uh, okay, this promising results against the new coronavirus in studies this spring um, in cells and animals. Clinical trials started this summer with a larger phase 3 trial expected to start by October. We haven't got any results from them yet. Recombinant ACE2, angiotensin converting enzyme. 
2. To enter cells, the coronavirus must first unlock them, a feat it accomplishes by latching onto a human protein called ACE2. Scientists have created artificial ACE2 proteins which might be able to act as decoys. This is something like uh, in the front line we use uh, uh, dummy soldiers to fire, um, lure the soldiers so from the up from the enemy so enemy keep shooting these uh, dummy soldiers and they finish the bullets it's uh, some same tactics used in medicine here luring the coronavirus away from the vulnerable cells the company on ac2 proteins have shown promising results in experiments on cells but not yet in animal or people Ivermectin, for decades Ivermectin has served as a potent drug to treat parasitic worms Doctors use it against river blindness in Africa and other diseases while veterinarians give dogs a different formulation to cure heartworm. Studies on cells have suggested Ivermectin might also kill viruses. But scientists have yet to find evidence in animal studies or human trials that it can treat viral disease. As a result, Ivermectin is not approved to use as an antiviral. Oleandrin. Oleandrin is a compound produced by the oleander shrub. It can cause irregular heartbeats, making the plant dangerous to ingest. But many plant compounds, even some potentially lethal ones, have proven to be medically useful. And so researchers have investigated oleandrin as a potential treatment for cancer. The US Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Disease tested oleandrin on coronavirus infected cells in May. but the experiments were inconclusive. But most compounds that kill viruses in cell cultures fail in further testing in animals or humans. What's more, experts worry about the safety of oleandrin is a treatment for the coronavirus, given the toxicity of the plant. Phoenix Biotechnology is considering selling oleandrin as an over-the-counter supplement consumers should be aware that there is no evidence that it is safe or effective against the coronavirus in people. Lopiravir and Ritonavir. 20 years ago, FDA approved this combination of drugs to treat HIV. Recently, researchers tried them out on the new coronavirus and found that they stopped the virus from replicating. But Clinical trials in patients prove disappointing. In early July, the World Health Organization suspended trials on patients hospitalized for COVID-19. Hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. Chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine have been there for long years with us and it's been treated, has been used to treat malaria in Africa, in Asia and everywhere. German chemists synthesized chloroquine in the 1930s as a drug against malaria. A less toxic version called hydroxychloroquine was invented in 1946 and later was approved for other diseases such as lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Even I have used uh, chloroquine when I was um, working in the north of Sri Lanka. Uh, that was during the civil war. I was this, after my internship. I was posted to this particular place called Mana. It's a small island on the tip of the. Um, northwestern Sri Lanka and um, well that's the first time I have been that part of the world and uh, well I realized that there are a lot of malaria so I have taken um, anti-malarials but never contract malaria then I stopped it anyway it was a preventive drug okay at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic researchers discovered that both drugs could stop the coronavirus from replicating in cells since then, they have had a lot of confusion over this drug. A few small studies on patients offered some hope that hydroxychloroquine could treat COVID-19. The World Health Organization launched a randomized clinical trial in March to see if it was indeed safe and effective for COVID-19. Meanwhile, President Trump repeatedly promoted hydroxychloroquine at press conferences, toting it as a game changer and even took it himself. But more detailed studies prove disappointing. Studies on animals such as monkeys and mice uh, found no evidence that hydroxychloroquine stopped the disease. 
the WHO, the National Institute of Health, and Novartis have since halted trials investigating hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19. Let's look at some other drugs. They mimic uh, the immune system. Convalescent plasma. A century ago, doctors filtered plasma from the blood of recovered flu patients, so called the convalescent plasma. Rich with antibodies, help people sick with flu fight their illness. Now, researchers are trying out this strategy on COVID-19. Tens of thousands of patients in the US have received plasma through a program. But in August, the evidence was still too weak for its use in a larger scale. Monoclonal antibodies. Convalescent plasma from people who recover from COVID-19 contains a mix of billions of different kinds of antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies, we pick up the right ones from there and we use it. Some of the molecules can attack the coronavirus from this uh, cocktail, but as I said, you know, um, there are a lot of them, they are waste. So they have developed these monoclonal antibodies. When the pandemic began, scientists began shifting through this slurry of antibodies and picked out a few dozen types that provide a potent defense against COVID-19 in cells and animals, according to preclinical studies. These potent molecules, known as monoclonal antibodies, have a long track record in medicine. Monoclonal antibodies were first investigated in the 1970s and since then, many countries have approved them for 79 diseases ranging from cancer to AIDS. But we haven't got any conclusive results about them, them yet. Interferons. Interferons are molecules our cells naturally produce in response to viruses. They have profound effect on the immune system, rousing it to attack the invaders, while also reining it in to avoid damaging the body's own tissues. Injecting synthetic interferons is now a standard treatment for a number of immune disorders. One of the drugs called Rabif, and it is prescribed for multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis. As part of its strategy to attack our bodies, the coronavirus appeared to tamp down interferon. That finding has encouraged researchers to see whether a boost of interferon might help people with the COVID-19, particularly early infection. Early studies, including experiments in cells and mice, have yielded encouraging results that have led to clinical trials, phase three trials on a combination of Rebif and the antiviral Remdesivir with results expected by fall 2020. But still, there's no conclusive results on it. Dexamethasone and other corticoid steroids. Corticosteroids, often called steroids, are used to tamp down inflammation and for conditions such as allergies and asthma. In 1960s, doctors began using them as a treatment for pneumonia and other severe respiratory illnesses, but the results of clinical trials were inconclusive. The COVID-19 pandemic brought a new interest in these drugs and a raft of new clinical trials were launched. In June, dexamethasone was the first shown to reduce COVID-19 deaths. A study of more than 6,000 people found that dexamethasone reduced deaths by one-third in patients on ventilators and by one-fifth on patients on oxygen. It may be less likely to help and may even harm patients who are at an earlier stage of COVID-19 infection. However, in its COVID-19 treatment guidelines, the National, Health, National Institute of Health recommends only using dexamethasone in patients with COVID-19 who are on ventilator or are receiving supplemental oxygen. It's not for everyone. Cytokine inhibitors. The body produces signaling molecules called cytokines to fight off diseases, but manufactured in excess, cytokines can trigger the immune system to widely overreact to infections and process sometimes called cytokine storm. 
Researchers have created a number of drugs to hold cytokine storms and they have proven effective against arthritis and other inflammatory disorders. Researchers are now trying out a number of different cytokines inhibitors against COVID-19 in clinical trials. So far, the results are mixed. In some trials, the drug tocilizumab has shown some evidence of reducing deaths but has failed to help others. In similar drug, sarilimab appeared to benefit patients in phase 3 trials. Cytosorb one machine called Cytosorb can reportedly purify patients' entire blood supply about 70 times in 24-hour period. A small study in March suggested that Cytosorb had helped dozens of severely ill COVID-19 patients in Europe and China, but it was not a randomized clinical trial that could conclusively demonstrate it was effective. A number of studies on blood filtration systems are underway, but experts caution that these devices carry some risks. For example, such filters could remove beneficial components of blood as well, such as vitamins, medications, etc. But I bet it's going to be really expensive. It's, going, it's like uh, you're going in a dialysis machine every day um, to recycle your blood. Stem cells. Certain kinds of stem cells can secrete anti-inflammatory molecules. Over the years, researchers have tried to use them as a treatment for cytokine storms, and now dozens of clinical trials are underway to see if they can help patients with COVID-19. But these stem cell treatments haven't worked well in the past, and it's not clear yet if they will work against the coronavirus. What else can we do? If, if someone is infected with the coronavirus and has respiratory failure, prone positioning helped, uh, this, uh, the simple act of flipping COVID-19 patients onto their bellies um, opens up the lungs. The manure has become a common place in hospitals around the world since the start of the pandemic. It might help some individuals avoid the need for ventilators, entirely. The treatments uh, benefit continue to be tested in a range of clinical trials. Uh, I have um, uh, I had a patient on one of my iron health work program in respiratory failure program. He is, he's a, a medical person himself as well. He had contracted COVID and he has asthma as well and uh, actually he said uh, in that program that he had always slept um, prone that means uh, his belly uh, downwards for it helped him to breathe better while he was contracted COVID and uh, suffering with respiratory uh, kind of respiratory failure. I'm asthmatic at the same time. So you are asthmatic so yeah. you have one. So yeah. luckily enough I got myself sorted out with you know with the, the um, asthma inhalation In, uh, inhalers. inhalers that I have. I got that sorted out so Thinking that you're going into COVID area, which is respiratory plus it doesn't help for me being asthmatic. Yeah, that's when I, uh, that's uh, luckily enough it helps me. And when we and it when we were told all, also that patients will be prone, which helps the so patient sleep in a face way. down. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> which uh, helps uh, the patient at the same time the lungs to to be able to inflate more. That, that, that's uh, quite interesting, isn't it? As uh, it's uh, like in in tradition, uh, parents uh, tell uh, children not to sleep face down, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But it helps breathing anyway. Absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah, I only realized that yes, it helps him a lot because uh, normally with asthmatic, mo you most of the time you sit up mm -hmm. just to make yeah. yourself comfortable, and then you can uh, breathe. Expand your lungs. Uh, yeah. yeah. But this time yeah. I said, if it helps being prone, that's when I realized yes, I'm more comfortable being being unprone and able to. Ventilate, ventilators and other respiratory support devices, well, if you are really ill with, uh, with COVID-19 and respiratory failure, this will help and this is, uh, you have to leave it for the experts to do it. Anticoagulants, 
these are supported drugs but again coronavirus can invade cells in the lining of blood cells and leading to tiny clots that can cause strokes so um, this might be helpful in the hospital set settings but um, it is not a drug to take out of the counter it has to be prescribed by, by doctors and supervised because uh, anticoagulants can make your blood um, um, thin so it is easy to uh, bleed so it has to be supervised vitamins and mineral supplements our bodies need vitamins and mineral to work properly some researchers are investigating whether supplements might help against COVID-19 but there is no strong evidence yet that they prevent infections or speed up recovery from them. Vitamin C is known to tamp down inflammation. So some researchers are investigating whether it can help with the immune system's overreaction to COVID-19. Several clinical trials, but no convincing data shown a benefit has emerged yet. A correct dose of vitamin C might not be harmful still. If you uh, think you're getting ill I think we even get when we get cold we do that but don't overdose vitamin D vitamin D is uh, is quite important it is a quite uh, emerging thing especially um, people of afro caribbean origin or Asians uh, colored skin people who live in Europe they don't get uh, enough vitamin D I have done a special program on vitamin D on and help work with Dr. Akram uh, in the for the television program with the specialists who've been investigating vitamin D for 12 years, uh, Dr. Subodh Thanthalake. And uh, it was an amazing program. You could go back and to uh, the YouTube channel, Health Talk with Dr. Akram, and look for that program, Vitamin D, and you can, uh, of course, learn a lot about Vitamin D. Anyway, for Asian people, how long now, they have to lay if down? If you have so, a darker skin, to produce same amount of vitamin, you have to have four times of that time. Four times than the white fair white person. Fair person. So now that means at least it will take two hours you to produce same amount of vitamin D. Let's talk a little bit about vitamin D here. Um, vitamin D has also attracted attention along with promoting good bone health. It may play some role in helping immune cells functions. Some studies have found an association between low levels of vitamin D and high rates of COVID-19. But such studies cannot establish that this deficiency was the cause of those disease rates. It may be that population who suffer high rates of vitamin D deficiency are getting hit harder by the coronavirus for other reasons, including poor access to health care or underlying conditions like obesity, some clinical trials are underway to test whether vitamin D can help 19 COVID-19 patients. But of course we know the COVID-19 has discriminately treated population. The African men has three times chance of contracting COVID-19 and dying uh, compared to uh, white, white people and the Asians had 2.5% uh, uh, higher possibility of contracting COVID-19 and dying. So um, again, uh, most trials they found out vitamin D was less in this population. Um, of course, uh, for, a, for a colored skin, uh, it need to stay about three to four times more on the sunlight on the right atmosphere to get enough vitamin D compared to a white person who stays an hour. Um, there are a bit of pseudoscience, of course, they come out with COVID-19 as well, the preachers preaching about it. Some people uh, use religious texts to treat it. Um, but well, we haven't got any uh, scientific evidence for that. Um, a few things emerge drinking or injecting bleach please don't do that um, these are for disinfectants uh, can help slow the spread of the coronavirus but only when it's used properly that's to clean the surface not to drink or not to inject and um, washing with soap is the best way to keep four hands clean but alcohol-based sanitizers will do if you're not near a sink 
ultraviolet light well it will it kills um, viruses on the surface but if someone is infected with COVID-19 they sit down in the ultraviolet light for hours it will not kill the virus from their skin certain food such as ginger turmeric uh, different spices being consumed to protect COVID-19 well we we don't know we haven't got any randomized trials on this so I cannot advise you on these ones it's up to you if you want to take but don't overdose them and even inhalation of steam from boiled ayurvedic cocktail of herbs being used in certain parts of the world well um, inhalation of um, these these ayurvedic herbs of course it can um, dilate your bronchial vessels it might help them breathe i'm not sure if it completely it will treat a covid 19 uh, but it possibly can give you a symptomatic relief but only we know that we don't have clear evidence for any of this as i said earlier in the program there is no cure yet for covid 19 and even the most promising treatment to date only helps certain groups of patients and await validation from further trial i have been asked this question many times doctor are there any treatment are there any are there new treatment are there any treatment COVID-19 so that's the reason I made this program so everyone can watch and understand what is out in the market and you have a wide idea what's going on and this is your health and you need to know all these things my aim is to make this medicine simple so that you can understand your health and you can of course raise your question our youtube channel health talk with dr akram if you haven't subscribed so far um, please consider subscribing because you will get more and more updates and more programs will be coming up and uh, i want to be i want you to be on top of your health so what can we do just go back to the basics with covid 19 prevention wash your hands frequently and especially if you touch public places wear a mask cover your nose mouth in public places especially inside public buildings shops such as dancing follow garment guidelines they are made to protect you and others around if you fall ill follow garment guidelines and talk to your GP if you or someone in your household or workplace contract COVID-19 please follow the local government guidelines thank you for staying with us on high, uh, health talk with Dr. Akra if you have any further questions please drop a line under the program in the YouTube channel or you can always um, send a message on Facebook Twitter and Instagram health talk with Dr. Akram and uh, we'll definitely come back to you um, as soon as possible.